Hi, this is again Volleyball Explained and First Tempo. Today's episode will be a little bit different. Uh, and in it, Mark Lebedieu and me are going to ask the question, do you understand volleyball? Uh, why do we decide to, uh, to make this episode? Actually, Mark uh, wrote a very interesting article in the website what volley uh which is uh, which was titled what most people don't don't understand about volleyball so first of all mark thank you for being here and second of all what most people don't understand about volleyball in first place let's start from here all right, thanks, Bogdan. It's a pleasure to be here, as always. Uh, where to even begin what people uh, don't understand? Um, uh, I, uh, there are a few different things that, that I identified. Um, and one of the, perhaps the first one, and I'm talking mostly about men's volleyball here, uh, but the biggest one that uh, is really difficult to comprehend on TV and sometimes even in the stadium is the speed of the game. And by that, firstly, one is about how fast the ball is flying. So uh, we know from our uh, TV uh, coverage that with the, the Hawkeye and the different technology they use, we can see now exactly how fast the the speeds are of the serve, of the spike. So serving up to 138, I think, is the is the current record kilometers an hour. Uh, spikes are regularly, even the women's, uh, the women's spikers are well over 100 kilometers an hour. Uh, in the Champions League the other week, uh, Hark and uh, Igona were uh, 106, 108, 110 uh, kilometers an hour. And... Uh, remembering that the ball is traveling. We have to play the ball normally with our forearms, which is a, a really bizarre thing to do by itself. Uh, so the ball is traveling uh, 120, 130 kilometers, and the distance that you have to react is uh, maybe in defense is uh, six meters, maybe in service uh, 12 to 15 meters. So uh, the first thing is, is just the speed of the ball that you don't really have the the impression of uh, when you're watching on TV or even the further away you get from the uh, from the court from the the uh, from the uh, spectator places tribuna I can never remember which language the the grandstand yeah uh, but. Um... If, if, if there are people watching now and they like maths, actually anyone can, uh, can understand and determine how much is the reaction time. Because if we have a, a, a serve, a player serving 120, 100, even 30, 38 is the record, uh, and yeah. you have a 15 meters, uh, distance between the server and the receiver. So anyone good enough in maths can actually calculate direction time. And uh, uh, I was I was considering showing this video a little bit later, but you start with speed, which is normal because speed is uh, is vital. Uh, speed makes volleyball very different to uh, to. Uh, two years ago, but let's start with the record surf of long because that's what it is. Um, let's just show it again because probably we need to to do it in a uh, in a slower manner. Uh, but even from a video like this, you can just understand how quick it is uh and i'm um, and and i uh just um, uh told about a, a story of uh, 2012 uh olympic qualifier match between germany and uh and uh, italy in sofia 
and uh, Grozer, who is still playing, uh, served uh, very fast, very hard on Andrea Bari, the Libero of Italy, and uh, he was uh, unconscious for a second or two after the serve. So this is, I believe, said it for itself, how fast it is, how uh, different it is to, um, yeah, to 30, 40 years ago, uh, where volleyball was much slower, let's say it in this way. Uh, to this point, and in the article, this is actually a separate point that I make, is that uh, men's volleyball is, is really violent. It's uh, and violent. Violent is the only word that I can think of that really describes it. And the 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 story you tell you tell about uh, Groza and Bari is one example of that. And the the one that that commonly happens, especially when the libero is in position five and he's defending on the line, and uh, it's really common that the libero will take a ball in the chest and. When I'm coaching from the sidelines, I'm standing right next to right next to this guy, and when the hard attack hits the libero in the chest, it just it makes a sound that's uh, uh, it's difficult <laughs> difficult to describe this sound, but it's it's just violent. And of course, the libero, because he does this his whole life, he makes no reaction, so he just goes, "All right, I didn't get that ball." And, uh, and he also doesn't want to show to the other team that it hurts. Uh, so the spectators go, the spectators can easily imagine, oh, okay, this is, uh, this is every day. But when, you, when you're when you next to him and you can hear the sound and you can even even feel it, it hit somebody, it's a, uh, like I said, it's a, a violent action. And um, I don't think that anybody really thinks about uh, or non-participant, at least. I don't think anybody really thinks about volleyball as being violent, but these attacks, these serves, when the guy just, they smash it as hard as they can and somebody has to get in the way of it, um, it's uh, uh, it's fast, but it's more than just speed. It's, uh, said it again, violence. Yeah, and um, in in this in this regard, I was considering also that uh, probably some people will say, okay, the people who play volleyball uh, can understand how quick it is, how fast it is. But I was thinking, I have I have six years in our amateur league, and okay, you play volleyball, you know the principles, but you don't know the speed, and it's probably it's probably very similar in tennis. For example, because in tennis, uh, when you're watching or uh, on the on the main camera uh, in television, you cannot understand actually how quick it is. And and there are some moments when they when they show the, the picture from a little bit of from a camera that is uh, just uh, below from the uh, main camera, and you can understand how fast it is. Is it just is just um, a matter of perception, maybe. I would try to to share a screen from one of your um, one of your uh, articles in the website at Home and Court, uh, just to, to when it comes to speed, just to show one of the um, the last. Is it uh, okay? Just now, so I'll try to do it. Okay, probably. Now it's better. Uh, okay, I will show them a flow surf. F firstly, float serving is faster. Uh, okay, let's do it this way. Here, so for, yeah. for reference, the, the, the action on the left is from 1984, and it's the top two teams. Uh, in the world playing USSR and uh, USA and on the left on the right sorry is the Olympic qualification match from 2019 Australia against Italy and the float serve there is the the long the surf 1984 is from behind the court it's four meters above the height of the net and 
2019, we have the jump flight that is really fast. Next, the next one is um, a jump serving is the is is even faster. Let's say it in proper. Uh, so not. This is here. The different is there. Yes, it's uh, uh, it's much bigger. Uh, reception is lower. I I will not. Um, I will not uh, uh, show them all, but the principle is the same. Uh, volleyball is much, much quicker and much more different than 40 years ago. I would say even 20 years ago and probably 10 years ago. What do you think? I think that 20 years ago, definitely. Uh, you can uh, you can watch matches from 2004 Olympics, for example, and uh, Brazil in this team with uh, Ricardo and Giba Dante. Uh, they play more or less volleyball like uh, like we we are used to now. Um, but the other teams in this tournament, they're playing. It's a a slow plodding. Uh, it seems like it anyway. Obviously, at that time, it was the the greatest athletes and the greatest game but um 10 years ago we maybe the the speed although the serving now is stronger than uh, 10 years ago uh and there are definitely some other parts of the game that are that are faster and one of the one of the other things that i i think in terms of speed is um we men's volleyball there's a lot of uh, rallies that finish after the first series of actions. Uh, but when there are rallies, uh, then the game really speeds up and the players have to make uh, decisions and control the ball in really short periods of time. Uh, one, I don't know how wide the, the game pinball was, the old arcade game with the silver ball that's... Uh, that's always flying around the um, uh, around this game, um, but the it seems like the ball is just bouncing in every direction. But the players are making adjustments. They're controlling this ball. They're searching for solutions. Um, when the when the spiker, uh, for example, plays in the block to get the rebound, um, all of these actions are really fast. Uh, between the plays, between each contact. And this is another area that comes under the category perhaps of, of speed where it's really difficult for the spectator to follow. Uh, the commentators on TV, they can't describe it because there's not enough time in between. And by the time you get to the end of the rally, there's nothing... Uh, you can't talk about something that happened 30 seconds ago off one elbow and how they... Um, all of this stuff. And I think that it can feel or seem to spectators as if it's uncontrolled and the players are not uh, aware necessarily or they're, it's just an accident that an outcome uh, comes out. But the, uh, the, the reality is that uh, we don't train exactly each of these situations, but we practice them a lot. We're in those situations a lot, and the the control uh, and the decision making and the solution finding of the players is, uh, I think, is too fast for uh, for a lot of people to to understand until they really spend some some time with the game. So, for me, that's part of the uh, the speed of the game um, and. It's, yeah, I mean, I was watching uh, just before uh, the Canada, Canada is playing Turkey right now in the, in the VNL in the men's and there are, it's not every third rally, but there are four or five rallies per set where, you know, it's really difficult to follow what they're doing. And then suddenly somebody spikes and wins and, um, you know, it's, it's uh, unless you really inside it, uh, difficult to know what what just happened. 
Okay, of course, the next question is linked to everything you said, I said too, but uh, I think it's a little bit controversial. I think there will be a lot of opponents on this, but oh, I, I you, always say, you always say volleyball is the most dynamic sport. Why? Uh, <laughs> there are lots of sports that have uh, jumping. There are lots of sports that have uh, short, fast movements over one or two meters, um, basketball, uh, football, American football has a lot of short dynamic movements. Uh, a lot of sports has have jumping, but volleyball is only those movements. So volleyball is, the sport is jumping. So in basketball, we we run around for a uh, week, not me. <laughs> um, in basketball, they run around for a minute. Somebody makes a jump shot. Okay, that's not really a jump. Every two minutes, there's a dunk. Um, and, you know, basketball crowds get excited about a dunk that happens uh, every, you know, 10 times a match. But in a volleyball game, there is that action, that dumping, dynamic, maximum effort, um, uh, jump it happens every 25 seconds. So um, this is uh, uh, this is the dynamism of the sport, and um, the as I said, the the players are, are maximum jumping, and every time it's it's a spiker plus a blocker, maybe two or three blockers, um, and you know it's a it's a maximum effort for one second, and then uh, Two second break and then it happens again. So um, I think it's pretty obvious that volleyball is the most dynamic sport. It doesn't mean best. It doesn't. It just means um, that it's really dynamic. Yeah, it doesn't mean also the most difficult. Okay, it's very difficult, but this is not the the point. I I, I would say that the most important point here is that volleyball is the only sport. Uh, whose rules does do not allow the players to keep the ball or the puck in ice hockey, for example, because in football you can keep the ball, in basketball you can keep the ball, in rugby, American football, Australian football, whatever football, uh, uh, handball, ice hockey, um, uh, grass hockey, uh, etc. So you can always uh, keep the ball probably uh i don't know if yeah, baseball baseball some way but it's also different of course uh but volleyball is for sure the only at least popular team sport where you are not able to to keep uh, the item you are playing with so it's uh in in this regard even okay some people will say ice hockey the speed is uh, is quicker but uh but they are also uh, very different uh, uh, sequences in ice hockey where where the speed is not that quick. So so in this way, I I, I would uh, accept uh, uh, this the statements that volleyball is the most dynamic sport, and uh, I believe that uh, that this is the case. Uh, and here comes the next question: Then why there are people that believe that volleyball is simple? <laughs> Um, it's not that uh, there are people that believe volleyball is simple. It's some volleyball people believe that volleyball is simple. Um, <laughs> and I, the answer that immediately comes to mind is that uh, because it's a series of repeated uh, rallies, that every rally begins the same way and follows the same basic sequence, that uh, one rally looks like another rally. So it seems like there's less random action. So, if, you know, American football or rugby where the ball can bounce in different directions or um, games with physical contact where uh, players have to uh, survive uh, contact with, with other people. Uh, volleyball looks really simple. And that is, of course, is positive up to a point, um, but then after some point, it it's really difficult then, or can be difficult to understand where the, the variations are. And 
volleyball, just like every other sport, is infinitely variable. It's uh, it just starts from a, a, a really basic template, and then there are a lot of uh, small variations. And perhaps that's uh, another part of it that the variations from rally to rally, from contact to contact, you never have the ball in your hand, which is a great uh, point that uh, that you made. Great, you never have possession of the ball. That uh, there are so many tiny, not not even tiny variables, but variables that make every rally, uh, every sequence of actions uh, unique, and um, it's difficult to it's difficult to explain them from, as I said, from the point of a, a TV commentator. I've done some of that and and uh, made what I think was valiant efforts to explain uh, different parts of the game, but. Um, you know how a, how a server changes their their angle uh, by you know one one meter on the TV screen. It doesn't look very much, but uh, this one meter can then affect the approach, uh, the movement of the setter, the approach of the uh, first tempo attacker. Uh, how easy it is to set to the other side, um, and so on and so forth. So um, I think people. People see the game, see that every rally, most rallies look similar and say from there that the, the game is simple. But if you think about it um, in the taking your last point, which was that you don't have possession of the ball. So it's six people organizing themselves within three rebounds. They never have possession. So they have three contacts to make a play against the other team, and these six players at the at uh, at the same time have to counter that action. So it's it's one ball. Nobody has the ball for longer than whatever it is, one tenth of a second. Um, and uh, I mean, there are more complex things in the world: rocket science, brain surgery, um, but it's a completely different process than uh, than a football team, than uh, how they organise themselves, or a, or a basketball team who who have the ball. They have multiple seconds to make decisions and and make movements, uh, coordinated movements with their teammates. Yep, um, in Bulgaria we have a joke that volleyball is uh, strong in empty. So hit strong in empty place or right. something like this. Uh, and the other joke that is uh, very typical for Bulgarian's volleyball community is that um, actually, uh, I don't know if you are uh, acquainted with uh, in 1994, uh, we made our biggest progress in the Football World Cup. And uh, there is a joke that if uh, our head coach from then was a volleyball coach, uh, uh, because he was just... Um, very famous with his very simple uh, simple instructions. Something like uh, guys play with one touch and the ball uh, doesn't have to, to, to touch the floor and that's all. So it's... Yeah. Um, this, is a, uh, this is another question we can discuss. Yeah, sometimes, probably, simple, sometimes simple solutions are the best, but even in volleyball, simple solutions and the football coach was the same. So he could say something very simple, but he had uh, Christo Stoichev. Stoichev. Stoichkov. 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 Yes, of course. <laughs> I remember everything about him except his name. Um, he ha he could say everybody else do simple things and let uh, Stoichkov solve the problem in the end. So yeah. I, from memory, this was how the tournament worked, yes? Yeah. Uh, and I've prepared two videos just to show this uh, variety and complexity because, uh, yes, uh, it seems that it's the same, but actually you can, in 15 seconds, you can have a plenty of different actions. So let's see some uh, different videos that are, we don't have to show anything specific, but it's... Uh, just how volleyball can uh, mm, can progress during a, a rally, and the other one is uh, that one's a great example of of how the players are 
um, how the players have to make different movements. And uh, for me, watching watching this, um, it's like a really complicated uh, dancing sequence. Uh, um, Twelve players are, are moving not exactly with each other, um, but they're reacting to the ball, reacting to each other. Uh, and, I mean, this is, for me, this is... Uh, it's not the best rally ever, but it's really beautiful how these teams are able to com communicate with each other, coordinate with each other. Um, and like I said, in the different context, it looks random, but um, it's really highly coordinated. Yeah, just uh, one more. This this time is Argentina and Slovenia. So uh, the principle is the same. Uh, it's the principle is the same, it's not the same <laughs> because the variety is huge in volleyball. And uh okay, in in principle, it seems that, that, that there can be um two very similar uh similar rallies, but they are not they are not that similar as it seems. Um second uh, uh in in uh, next one I'd like to uh Probably not to ask you, but to yeah, okay, to ask you what do you think about the following? Uh some time ago, I think three three uh years or even four, I'm not exactly sure, probably three years. I, I did a podcast with Giovanni Guidetti, and uh he told me something that is uh mm, that is all the time in my mind when it comes to volleyball. And this is that volleyball is highest explanation of team sports. Uh, what uh, he uh, considers in that point is that volleyball is the only sport, the only team sport, uh, in which theoretically it's not possible to win by yourself. Uh, okay, there are sports where this is practically impossible, still theoretically possible. Like, for example, American football, let's say. American, uh, American football, the quarterback in principle can, 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 uh, can make a touchdown. Okay, practically not possible. Or this could be a very big, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Dark Horse, uh, I don't know, Black Swan or whatever in Nassim Taleb's uh, book, but uh, it will be a very rare occasion. However, theoretically, it's possible. In volleyball, it's not possible to win at all. I, uh, Giovanni is not the first person to say this. Um, uh, many, I mean, I, I think the first person I heard this uh, say this was Doug Beale. Um, perhaps even 20 or 30 years before that. But for me, it's a, it's a kind of obvious statement because uh, the, you don't have possession of the ball. You can't make multiple, you can't make successive contacts. So you have to give the ball directly to somebody else. Um, and uh, there's no player on the court who can decide the game by themselves. And... Uh, you can say that the setter has a big influence because he because he or she takes every second contact. But if you look, they don't actually take every second contact. And the side out part is only one half of the game. So it's uh, we're, I, I'm a big fan of the NBA. And they talk about players who only play offense or only play defense. And it's not possible in volleyball to only play offense. You have to play defense also. You have to be able to, if you're an attacker, you have to block. If you are a, uh, if you are a receiver, you have to defend in some moment. Um, and so I think that it's, it's really obvious in a way that um, volleyball is one where no individual player can decide the game. And I, in terms of uh, the promotion of volleyball, maybe this is even a, a negative because um, 
it can be difficult to to uh, find out who is the best player or who was the best player in the match or um, there are so many players who have impact on the game in in a completely different way. So uh, middle blocker, for example, we we never give the middle blocker really big credit because they have the, the least points and um, they come out for the, the libero. Uh, but the, the middle blocker has a really important effect on the game that uh, other players can't play without the without the middle. So. Um, I, I am with Giovanni, I am with Doug, um, that volleyball is the, is the highest uh, team, team sport. Last point I would like to cover in this, uh, in this idea of ours is um, not only watch, but also see volleyball. Uh, this is the, this is, uh, the, main, uh, the main idea of, of volleyball explained. Uh, actually, it's very curious that when I started the the, the channel, the the web page, uh, the Facebook page, I didn't have that exact sentence in mind. But uh, just two three months ago, I was uh, I was invited for a very first time in the television that was uh, broadcasting uh, the Bulgarian league at the time and. Uh, and the journalist, the moderator, asked me what is behind. And it was just very spontaneously uh, this sentence uh, came to mind. Not only watch, but also see volleyball. I, I, I remember very, very well how actually I, I, I met you, uh, 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 unfortunately, uh, just online for now. Uh, you were some... some uh, uh, several times in Bulgaria, but it's, it wasn't possible to, to, to see each other in person. But uh, I, I made a leadership video uh, uh, quoting uh, quoting the the book of uh, uh, Platonov, uh, my my profession. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, my profession, the game. The, my profession, the game. And yes. so actually, you 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 wrote me some comments on, on this, and uh, th that's that's how we actually uh, get uh, got to know each other. But in this regard, how can we begin um, starting to see volleyball, but not only watching it? Uh, one one way, of course, is uh, volleyball explained. Um, so Thank this you. is, uh, but this is the point, and and also on my blog, I, I think both of us. Uh, this is. I mean, we have the whole sport in common, but uh, but uh, we have this specific thing also in common to try to uh, to help people to uh, to see to see the game and to see the the beauty of the game, uh, not just the the dynamic, the speed. All of these things are, are wonderful. But uh, I, I actually did a, an interview a couple of days ago that they asked what what I love the most about volleyball. And for me, the, the answer was the, the coordination of the players, how people work together, how people move together. And for me, this is, a, this is the great beauty of the, of the game. It's like, uh, it's like a great musical band. It's a rock band, uh, orchestra, I guess. It's not my, my style of music, but but when there is one note that one person plays and somebody else plays two other notes and then nobody plays for one second, um, this, this coordination that leads to something, uh, something great. And um, it's a difficult process. And I can't say that I could see volleyball uh, when I started to play or even when I started to coach. It's, a, it's something that's, uh, that, that I... I learned uh, over a long period of time and and seeing many players and seeing many games and being curious why did this happen the 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 blocker is cross court but the spiker still spike cross court why why did this happen why uh, did the setter set this person in this situation why uh, why is the spiker uh, always spiking off the block and out? How is this possible that it can happen? 
Um, and by asking these questions and searching for answers, uh, it took a long time with, with me because the, we had VHS tapes. Uh, I had VHS tapes from the World Championships of four matches that we watched 20 times. Uh, now we have the possibility, we have Volleyball World TV, we can watch every match that's played and we can go through this process much faster. But um, uh, notice things, be curious, um, try to figure out why, why something is the way it is. And really often it's not what you, what you think it is. Okay, and my last question uh, is, uh, let's see, uh, let's say that uh, we have a person uh, that is uh, that wants to to start seeing volleyball. He or she goes to a um, to a volleyball match. Which is the first thing uh, where he or she should be concentrated on? To the first thing. And this is the hardest thing. And I said it took me a long time to do it. And even now I'm not perfect. But if the secret is maybe to don't watch the ball. Don't watch so the ball. The ball is uh, the ball is is flying, but once the ball starts to move, it doesn't change until the next person touches it. But the 12 players on the court. They are always moving and trying to make the next position, the, the next decision. So the more you can watch the players and not the ball, the more you can uh, see the game. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks again for, for being a guest, uh, an analyst, a pundit, or whatever we can, uh, we can call it in the in the podcast and uh, as as you always it was a, about volleyball. yeah as as always it was uh, a great pleasure for me also of course thank you bogdan thank you everybody uh, you know where to find bogdan you know where to find me uh, and both of us will do everything we can to help you see Yep, I will. I will put in the description uh, the article uh, we started with uh, this uh, episode of the podcast uh, in Word of Volley. Uh, a link to to the blog of Mark, uh, and of course, thank you again for watching this episode, and see you the next time. Bye bye. Bye.